Now, I believe I made myself perfectly clear a couple of days ago in the 18th installment of this 30 Days to Take a Video series as to why I was no fan of American Badass Taker and why I absolutely hated that gimmick. Some of you might have thought it was foolish, the things I said. Some of you thought it was petty. It's probably all of that, but it doesn't matter. They are my reasons, not yours. Does it suck? That's why. And back in this time in wrestling fandom, going back to 2001, especially post-invasion angle, like I didn't think things could get much worse. Well, <laughs> how dumb I truly was. Because just when I thought American Badass Taker was stupid, and it possibly couldn't get any worse with him, all of a sudden, now the Undertaker's gonna frickin' turn heel because that's what the people wanna see, right? We're gonna get us some short-haired, big, evil Taker. <laughs> now, admittedly, admittedly, his heel turn was hilarity to the highest degree. The whole making JR kiss Vince's ass, like, that was classic. You know, Vince talking about how, or excuse me, Taker talking about how everybody kissed Vince's ass. And Taker been there for 11 years. He's seen all the big names come and go. And they all kissed his ass. He's kissed Vince's ass. But JR wasn't going to kiss Vince's ass because he think he's better than The Undertaker. Like, that shit was comedy. Just flat out high comedy. And I thought at least, if nothing else, hey, if we're going to do it with stupid Frickin' biker human taker. And we're not going to change any of his moves, really, other than adding the last ride powerbomb. Like, we can at least do something different, different with the character and turn him heel. So I was actually kind of, sort of, back then, looking forward to it. And then everything else afterwards happened. He cut his hair and he just looked like a stupid, lame, jamoke biker. Had no uniqueness to him at all anymore. He just looked dumb. I'm sorry. Like, he looked dumb. And some of the storyline stuff that they did within the next two years was just really freaking dumb. Like, this was a less than supremely relevant time in Taker's career, to me, in my opinion. Like, having Maven eliminate him at the Royal Rumble was stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Just so that way he could stomp a mud hole in Maven. And then he could go on and not beat Maven. So that way he has to wrestle the freaking rock. Like, this was terrible. Before you even get to the WrestleMania thing. Like, he's beating up Ric Flair's son. Like, who wants to see that? Like, it's Taker and Ric Flair. That should have been sufficient enough. But no, we got to bring the family and the freaking kids. Because the year before, when Sarah got brought into a storyline, that just was knocked out of the park, right? Christ. Now, the WrestleMania 18 match with Flair was pretty good. I'll give you that. But then you end up with Taker on Raw. And then, mind you, this is going back in time. So you got to remember the times here. So please don't go flaming away at me with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the comment section. This is back in 2002. So I was caught up in this stupendousness and what I thought was the spectacular awesomeness of Hogan's return to WWF and his freaking babyface turn away from the NWO. His epic with the Rock at 18. The next month of Backlash, he beats Triple H for the title. I'm thinking, hey, at least Hogan's going to get a couple of months with the title. This is cool. And then here comes Taker. And he beats Hogan at Judgment Day. And that match sucked. It was almost as bad as the match between Triple H and Hogan at Backlash. Oh, my freaking Lord. So now Taker's turned heel in a freaking C, and he's beat my dude Hogan, which I didn't want to see, especially at that time. It was stupid. Just so that way he could turn around and drop the belt really quickly, and then find himself jobbing out like a bitch a bunch of times to Brock Lesnar. Like, who the hell wants to see that? This is in that stage, in that phase, where everybody was bending over to see who could get the biggest freaking 
glory hole job anonymously, or non anonymously, excuse me, to freaking Brock Lesnar. And like if Brock was sitting there walking around and he wasn't careful watching behind him, whether it was JBL or Taker or somebody else, they were going to wipe his ass with their tongues, or they're going to give him the big old, big old Pat Patterson reach around. French tickler style. <laughs> that sucked. 2003 was stupid. And then by the time this all happens, now he turns babyface after the ladder match with Jeff Hardy. Like, you know, okay, whatever. But he's still walking around. He's supposed to be big evil. He's got the short hair. Like, this was stupid. And then you think about the storyline between him and Big Show that led up to the handicap tag match at WrestleMania 19. And I know it's easy to crap on the matches with Snuka and Jake and freaking Giant Gonzalez and King Kong Bundy as first four Mania matches. But my single least favorite WrestleMania match of Undertakers, above all of them. Even him and Brock at 30, him and Roman at 33, doesn't matter. The single absolute worst match, in my opinion, of his was that piece of crap at 19. Oh my God, here comes Nathan Jones, the Colossus of Bobble Road, saving the day with his whack-ass roundhouse kicks. Like, when I think about this phase of The Undertaker's career, I think about that match and the fact that he was wrestling a handicap match against a big show in A-Train, and freaking Nathan Jones had to come out and save the freaking day. The stupid-ass theme songs and all the keep rolling, 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 keep rolling, rolling, shut up! That's not The Undertaker. So you just literally call them Big Evil and nothing else. Change up some shit. Change up your entire presentation in the ring. Of course, we weren't going to do some of that crap. My God, it sucks so bad. And again, I understand the whole premise here. What, <coughs> excuse me, was to shake up Taker a little bit. He wanted to do it. And it's a perfect example in some ways of why you don't always let the inmates run the damn asylum because this is the abortion of a character that you get. The best thing about the big evil turn for The Undertaker is that it was buried once and for all, truly R.I.P. dead at Survivor Series 2003 thanks to Vince McMahon and Kane when they unloaded that fucking pile of dirt on that grave and set that stupid big evil gimmick straight to the depths of hell where it belonged. It was so appropriate too. It has always been known that Vince hated that version of Taker because it was lame. That's why I freaking hated it. Like the original Taker, the original Dead Man Taker represented so many things about professional wrestling and more importantly so many things about Vince's sports entertainment that he really liked. And a lot of us really liked. But instead of getting that, we got three and a half years of waste of freaking time, human ass Taker. And I realize some of the younger fans that grew up on this version of Taker, they probably prefer him. You probably think that I'm being stupid and I'm being really petty. And you know what? You are absolutely 100% correct. Now in the grand scheme of things, Beating Hogan apparently was a good thing, you know, as we go along over the years. Our perspectives on things potentially change a little bit. But think about it. This was a phase in his career where he's getting eliminated at the Royal Rumble by Maven. Maven! Maven! That's how inconsequential this taker was. That's how little it mattered. He's getting eliminated... By freaking tough enough jobber ass Maven! And by the way, why did anybody ever like Maven to begin with? He was lame as hell, I'm sorry. That's the truth. But not nearly as true as just how much Big Evil Taker absolutely sucked. His theme songs were stupid. His entrance was stupid. His shirts were stupid. His short hair was stupid. His whole gimmick shtick and character. Heel first, then face. Either way, Big Evil was stupid. Thank God it only lasted a couple of years. And thank heavens 
Now, there was enough other stuff in the company at that time to entertain me and preoccupy me to divert my attention away from that garbage. Because that's what it was, garbage. And thinking this is a good version of the Taker character is garbage. Garbage.